is cash flow the only metric you should be looking at when you're analyzing a rental property? Carrie, this is your video. Let's dive in. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Hey, real estate investors, welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show here on Holton Wise TV. As always, I am your host, James Wise. And folks, this is the show where we work together, right? Sometimes you guys send me properties you're interested in that perhaps you were shown by uh, other real estate agents. There's 5,000 agents in this particular market. Maybe you're doing your own direct mail, wholesalers, bank tapes, you name it. And then sometimes I go out and I find you properties that are on the MLS listed by those 5,000 other real estate agents, taking into account your risk tolerance, your budget, your wants, your needs, things of that nature. And one of those clients I've been working with is a guy by the name of Carrie. Carrie, me and you, we've done a combination, right? Sometimes I've shown you some things. Uh, we've made moves. We've done due diligence. And then uh, we've had to hit the restart button a few times because that's this is just step one, guys. Step one is figuring out you know, what's going on, figuring out if it's going to be a good deal, figuring out if it's got earning potential. But then we, we need to continue to do more due diligence. We got to get home inspectors inside these properties, looking at them with a fine tooth comb. I would rather see you guys back out of an average deal than get into a below average deal. That's the name of the game. That's what we do, right? And speaking of below average deals, man, that, that, that's, uh, you know, that's the first property here, dude. 3719 West 39th, Cleveland, Ohio, 44109. It was listed a few weeks ago by Coldwell Banker. It's a duplex listed at 94,900. And cruising through the photos, Carrie, I like it. I see why you do like it, right? This is what I want to see when I see renovations, right? A lot of times people are like, oh, updated this or updated that. You realize it was updated like 10, 15 years ago, right? Like 2000, y'all. That was 20 years ago, right? That's, that's not updated, okay? Uh, if you got a furnace and they're like, oh, newer furnace, people think like a furnace installed in 2000, uh, in 2000 is, uh, is an updated furnace. No, dog, that's 20 years old on a 30-year furnace. That, that's end of life, uh, you know? But this, we got updated in there, right? It's looking good. Everything is fresh. We got the gray walls. We got the white trim. You got nice, darker color carpet. I like what they did uh, from a renovation standpoint. It's, it's quite nice. So I see why you like it. And as far as the rents, currently, one unit is vacant. The other unit is bringing in a whole bunch of money, brother, $810 a month. And as far as that vacant unit goes, the listing agent has projected the rent to be at approximately six fifty a month. I, I would agree. I would say six to six fifty is a reasonable expectation for what you can get out of that vacant unit, right? So we got one tenant paying eight ten, another tenant who's probably going to be able to be moved into there with little to no cost, uh, paying approximately six to six fifty. So you're like, hey man. This appears to be priced a little bit higher than duplexes in the area, but from a cash flow perspective, it makes a lot of sense. I'm interested. What are your thoughts? And it does. It, it would pencil out, but I don't want to focus on this property too much, Carrie, because it's overpriced. Yes, from a pure cash flow perspective, this probably would pencil out. I would anticipate we're going to have probably like 55 to 60% of the anticipated revenue that comes in is going to go out the door uh, as far as expenses, right? You know, repairs, maintenance, vacancy, all that jazz. But I don't want to get into it though, because it doesn't matter to me because this property has just been listed about three weeks ago at 94 K brother. And it is way overpriced. I wouldn't want to see you spend, you know, more than $70,000 on this. Now, another reason that it keeps the value down is I don't think this is a true du duplex, right? This isn't a true duplex in my opinion. This appears to be a single family home that was at one point converted. Now, the things that really suck with these conversions, all right, there's two main issues. The first is laundry. Oftentimes on these conversions, the upstairs tenant does not have access to the basement. The basement is where uh, both, both, both tenants' laundry is set up, right? It's a common space, and uh, each tenant has hookups to install their own washers and dryers, right? 
in these conversions, oftentimes the uh, door to get into the basement is just in the downstairs unit. So the upstairs tenant doesn't have access to it, which is a pain in the ass because you're never going to get, you know, the true rents and the, and the true length of stay that we would see in a, a, a traditional duplex from that upstairs tenant if they can't even get down there to do their laundry. So it becomes a bummer. Now, in this particular one, it appears that the seller took care of that issue, which is quite nice. If you look at one of those photos, I'm scrolling through them, here it is. They went ahead and they installed laundry in one of the suites. So that appears to take care of that issue. But, you know, I gotta be honest, man, I don't really like seeing laundry uh, in upstairs units because the tenants, they're hooking up the, the washers and they're unhooking the washers when they move out. And oftentimes this is how leaks get started. And then sometimes the tenants don't tell anybody. And that's when you start getting leaks into the other unit, rotting the floor, et cetera, et cetera. One other thing why we're in this laundry room, that flooring, I also seen it in the kitchen as well, or maybe it was the bathroom. But that flooring, guys, I don't like that flooring. It looks okay in a picture, but here's the issue. That's like not like a nice vinyl product. That's actually like a like a rubbery, plasticky type thing. You kind of lay that shit down like it's carpet, right? It's just like one big sheet, and it's real cheap, and it's real flimsy. Like when a tenant is pushing, for instance, a fridge into place or pushing a uh, washer or a dryer into place, it'll actually rip that shit. So... The particular seller literally went in and, and got the cheapest fucking flooring they possibly could. And when you're dealing with rental property, you don't want to necessarily deck everything out all the time, but you don't want to deal with the cheapest bullshit there is. Like, this is just not going to be durable for people moving in and out. So I do not like that. Now, the other reason I don't like these conversion duplexes, it has to do with not being able to get in that basement. They cleared off the washer issue, but again, it, it creates more issues, which I've just mentioned. But another issue is, you know, these are old homes. Maybe the upstairs tenant, maybe they're microwaving a burrito. At the same time, they're running the vacuum. What does that do? Oftentimes, something like that, man, and that could trip the breaker. And then you got to go down to the electrical panel. You got to pop the breaker. Well, if you don't have access to the basement to go trip your breaker, that's a fucking problem, dude. What are you going to do? Call the downstairs tenant every time. Maybe he's not home. He doesn't give a crap. Then you got to contact the property management company. We got to charge a service call fee to go out there, trip the breaker. That adds a lot of BS, right? So those are a lot of issues you get when you buy a duplex uh, that was a conversion. Now, like anything in real estate, there's pros and cons. So if you can go ahead and get compensated for that, perhaps buying the property at a cheaper price than normal, you know, it makes sense to put up with the additional BS. But in this particular neighborhood, now this is a D-class neighborhood, but it's on the upswing. I love this neighborhood. It's in the Metro Health area, right? We got a billion dollar investment coming in from Metro and then right to the north of us, we got the hot, hot spots, man, Ohio City, Detroit, Shoreway. Tremont, Gordon Square, Edgewater, right? So I don't dislike the neighborhood, even though it's a D-class neighborhood, right? But in this particular neighborhood, the prices right now just happen to be lower. So if this was a traditional duplex, I would like you to, you know, probably pick this sucker up around 75K. The fact that it's not a traditional duplex, I don't even think you should pay 70. It should be under $70,000. So all that it would make no sense, even though technically it'll cash out, it'd make no sense for you to pursue this because they want 94000 for the thing and they just listed it. It's not like you're going to be able to come in and just be like, yo, dude, 60 k I know you just listed it. Here's 35000 but you want. They're not going to take it. So I don't even think that this is anything worth looking at. Maybe like if this is on the market nine months from now, maybe you go back to them. But, you know, they put cheap rental stuff in there. They cut corners, in my opinion. It's a subpar building uh, from a use standpoint, always going to have issues. And if you're not being adequately compensated for those issues at the acquisition, uh, I don't think you should do the deal. So I don't want to see you do the deal. So what I did, Carrie, I found a property in the same neighborhood for you that I think is going to make some more sense. Uh, what I want to do now is get into the, the sponsors of today's show. Let's get a word in from those folks. And then I'm going to run the numbers on that one for you. If you're going to make a move right here, bro, I want to say you make a move on that property. Good day, everyone. It's Angela Ramora here, your favorite Australian and the founder and owner of Ohio Cashflow. Over the last five years, Ohio Cashflow has established itself as the most reputable turnkey real estate investment company in the country. 
we offer solid B-class properties in Toledo, Ohio. We work and live in the same areas that we sell in. So when we sell your property, your tenants become our neighbors. We only take on a handful of investors every month. So for your chance to work with one of the best in the business, please fill out our investor application form, which you can find in the video notes below. Thanks for listening. And as we say down under, I'll catch you later, mate. Is that it? Yeah, we're done. All right, cool. Based in Indianapolis, Indiana, FS Houses is the premier investment property brokerage with an in-house property management department that can take care of all those unwanted landlord headaches, FS Houses can offer you the complete turnkey solution as well as wholesale properties offered to you at a discounted rate. With a network of thousands of active investors, wholesalers, and brokers, FS Houses can help you sell your property for top dollar on the open market or in a hurry to motivated investors seeking distressed real estate. Visit FSHouses.com or call 317-492-9025 for more information on the Indianapolis, Indiana real estate. All right, Carrie, welcome back, brother. Now this next property, dude, this is the one I like for you, right? If we're going up this, uh, this route here, this is the one you want to buy if we're comparing these two, man. 3604 Daisy, Cleveland. 44109. Now this one, dude, listed where we need to be, bro. $79,888, right? So right off the rip, we're already 15K less. And this one isn't a duplex. This is actually two single family homes on the same lot, bro. That's what I'm talking about. You talk about tenancies and uh, getting your tenants to stay longer, right? If we got three options here, if we have a traditional duplex, they're going to be in the middle, right? They're going to stay a decent length of time because it's still duplex living, right? You still got somebody above you or below you. You still got that shared common space in the basement. Like nobody's dream is to live like that. So you're going to see a higher frequency of turnovers in that than traditional single family homes. But you're going to see a hell of a lot lower turnover rate than if it's a conversion project where one of the tenants can't even access laundry normally or they, they're just, SOL if they trip a breaker, right? But what this is, right? This, 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 this gets our, you know, we got our cake and we could eat it too, man. We have our cake. We could eat it too right here because we get two single family homes. Dude, you want to talk about people staying the longest. You get yourself a single family home, right? There's nobody above you. There's nobody below you. You do not have to share your laundry, no sharing of your storage. That is great. And these houses, dude, they're, they're looking pretty good, man. They're looking pretty fly, right? Same deal, right? We got the stuff I like to see when we renovate these, man. We got the gray walls. We got the neutral colors throughout. We got the white trim. Everything is looking good. As far as the furnace and the hot water tank, man, they're looking like they're on the newer side, dude. We already got PEX plumbing in there, right? You know, these neighborhoods, right? From a neighborhood perspective, you know, same pros, same cons as your last property, okay? Pros. I see a billion dollars coming into the neighborhood, right? I see us right next door to the hot spots. But cons are, it's still a D-class neighborhood. You're still going to deal with uh, riffraff. You're still going to deal with issues. Um, you know, things like uh, getting your copper stolen. It's common in neighborhoods like this when the properties go vacant. But this is two houses on one lot, which is nice when you get duplexes in these neighborhoods because single family homes, yes, the tenants stay longer, but when the tenants do move out, there ain't nobody there watching over the property. But if you got a duplex, if one tenant moves out, you still got another person occupying that. So people really aren't breaking in to steal the copper. So with this one, uh, you know, we do have two houses on one lot, which kind of alleviates this because, you know, say the back house goes empty. The thieves would literally have to go into the backyard of the other guy's house. Uh, that's unlikely that that happens, but they did replace it with pecs, which is great because thieves don't come in and steal pecs, right? Because they want the piping because they can scrap it, right? They can scrap it and they can, you know, spend the money on drugs. You can't scrap pecs. It's got no scrap value like the copper does, okay? So I like this one better already. Price better number one number two we have two single family homes instead of dealing with a uh you know un uh, inefficient duplex as for the rents all right the back house currently rented that's the smaller one that's the two bed one bath that is rented for 850 a month 
Now the front house, the bigger of the two, that is currently rented for $700 a month. But on the chart, as you see, I wrote a thousand. Why did I write a thousand? Because that is the market rate. 700 is not the market rate for that big old house, right? This neighborhood did, we got to go section eight. Now, as far as one tenant paying seven, the other tenant paying 850, that's great. That'll cash flow from day one. So you buy the property and just let it cash flow. Then we're going to slowly increase that tenant's rent or just let him ride it out because you're still cash flowing, bro. Under no circumstance does it make any sense for you to purchase it and immediately kick that tenant out so you could do a big ass renovation to get market rent, right? Just let that, uh, you know, let that turnover uh, happen naturally, right? Let's collect the cash flow. But from a long-term perspective, note there's more meat on the bone. So if we look at this from a long-term perspective, we should be able to bring in long-term $1,850 a month in rent. That's $22,200. And in this particular neighborhood, I still don't even think you got to spend $79,000 on this, man. We can get it cheaper, dude. I think we spend seventy k. That should be able to take it down, bro. Seventy k you should be able to knock this down. It's been on the market for quite some time because even at 79, it's a little bit uh, pricey for this particular neighborhood. And one of the reasons is like, even though from like a long-term rental perspective, I like these two houses on one lot, it does kind of cut the buyer pull down a little bit because some lenders have issues with this. Some lenders don't like to write loans. I've seen some that will, but some won't because it's technically non-conforming. The way the zoning in Cleveland works right now today, uh, they don't let you buy one city lot and then build two homes on it. That's something that can't happen anymore. Some lenders are totally cool with that, right? If the homes burn to the ground, they get their payout, they move on, they're cool. Other lenders, they don't like it because if the homes burn to the ground, they can't then go in and build two. So you're going to need to talk to your lender. You're also going to want to talk to my lenders. Uh, anybody out there who's interested in talking to my lenders about this or other investments across the USA, send an email to my team, sales at oldenwise.com. We'll get you our list of lenders. We got lenders, many lenders for you, many options. We got traditional lenders, commercial lenders, hard money lenders. You guys name it, we have it sales at And you're going to want to interview several lenders, talk to them about this particular property, talk to them about the two houses on one lot, talk to them about all that. So because of that though, right, because it does kind of cut the buyer pull down because not all lenders can deal with it, right? That leaves cash buyers or buyers that have lenders that are cool with it. That's why I think it hasn't moved. And that's why I think we stand a chance at getting it at 70 K of that 1850 that comes in, brother, I anticipate you spending close to half of it, a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit more than half, 932 a month on average, leaving you with an NOI at 918. At 70 Gs, bro, that would be a 15.7 cap. And your cash on cash return, if you could get a lender to finance, it would be 48%. But don't get too excited over those numbers because just to clarify, that would be if you're able to get those rents up, get the first house tenant paying $1,000 a month. If you can get that tenant up to that rate eventually without any rehab, then you're at the 15.7 cap. Then you're at the 48% cash on cash return. If you got to put a little money into that unit before you get to that rent, of course, it's going to lower your numbers. But I don't know what you're going to have to do to that unit to get that rent up. Perhaps we could acquire it. And every year we just increase that tenant's rent 50 bucks a month or 100 bucks a month until they get to market and they never move out. If, if so, that's best case scenario, dude. That's freaking awesome. Maybe we try to raise that tenant's rent and they say, hey, I can't afford it. They move out. If they move out, you know, you got to anticipate probably like a five or $10,000 renovation, putting in premium upgrades in the kitchen and the bath. So we could acquire that next section eight tenant paying that thousand dollars a month. Right. So it can go either way. But again, the cool thing with this property is cheaper than your other one. I anticipate you having tenants who stay longer, bother each other less. And even at the current rental rates of 7850 the sucker cash flows and it cash flows much better than the previous property you're interested in. So it's not necessarily that the previous property would lose you a ton of money. It's just not a good deal from a cash flow perspective. It makes sense. But dude, there's better properties out there. There's better pricing out there. You know, it's not all about cash flow, man. It's about cash flow, but also what the comps are selling for, right? So that's why I go into these neighborhoods and I find you guys the best deals. And that's why I think it makes sense to... Uh, for you guys out there to acquire services from us on an a la carte basis because Carrie, you know, 
you may have just been like, yeah, dude, I did the numbers. This pencil's out. Screw it. I'll buy it. But hey, man, you were overpaying and there was something that was cheaper and better out there for you guys. So if you guys want to work with me like Carrie did, if you want me to save you a ton of money, at the very least $15,000 by doing this for him, go to holtonwise.com, click the property search for sale tab, click the MLS search analysis show, order yourself a package. Carrie, Reply to this email that we sent you uh, in the private video link. Just so everybody else is aware, y'all are watching this video on Holton Ice TV right now, but Carrie actually watched it two to three months ago, right? I don't just release them publicly right off the rip. I wait till the deals are no longer available. So by the time you're watching this, if I had to guess, I'm assuming Carrie already purchased this property and we're already bringing home that cash flow for him, okay? Or maybe we got deeper into the deal, we did an inspection, and maybe there were structural issues that we didn't know about and we nixed the deal. That remains to be seen. That's going to happen uh, down the road here. But know that these properties are not available. I release them to you guys to watch, learn from, but that's after all the dust has settled. So again, if you want to work with me one-on-one, get the deals done, you got to order a package. Carrie, let my team know what you want to do. Uh, we'll get in there. We'll try to negotiate. We'll try to pick it up at 70. We'll set you up for the inspections as we normally do. Yada, yada, yada. That's all I got for y'all today. As always, I am James Wise with Holton Wise, and this is Real Estate Investing Made Easy. Over 50% of those living in the greater Memphis area rent their home. This fact combined with the high price to rent ratio is why Forbes rates Memphis, Tennessee as one of the top real estate investment markets in the country. Memphis Investment Properties and their sister property management company, Reedy & Company Realtors, are among the largest and most trusted turnkey operations in this market. With over 30 years in business, a portfolio consisting of more than 2,700 active rentals, and an impeccable track record renovating over 6,000 single-family homes, it's no surprise they are one of the most reputable turnkey operations in the United States. Discount Property Warehouse, founded by real estate visionary Robert Beal, author of The Short-Term Retirement Program, is a complete turnkey solution for acquiring cash-flowing investment properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Our turnkey properties include a third-party home inspection, new HVAC with 10-year warranties, new dimensional roofs, competitive price-to-rent ratios, discounted property insurance, in-house property management, private financing, and much more. At Discount Property Warehouse, we have a staff of licensed agents standing by, ready to assist you with every aspect of the process. Call us today or visit us online at discountpropertywarehouse.com. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on our latest content, including video tours and analysis of investment properties that are available for sale, real estate investment education, and our most interesting encounters with tenants from hell. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy.